tried beating the Calamity mod in Terraria, but every naturally generated chest has completely random loot. Meaning that when I open a chest, it could have anything from a copper pickaxe and some silver coins to a full set of Auric Tesla armor and the Morasama. Do I have what it takes to beat Supreme Calamitas or will I never find any good loot and give up? Well, let's find out. I give up. I literally give up. I can't do this anymore. As soon as I spawned into my world, I turned on Revengeance Mode for the extra challenge. I opened up my loot bag, consumed my mana crystal, and dived headfirst into chopping down trees. I made my way over to the left side of the world, as at the very bottom left of the screen, I saw a wooden chest. Upon opening this chest, I received some pretty trash loot. We received some hard mode armor, got a true Excalibur short sword, which is a pretty good weapon, but it's not going to carry us too far into the game. I made my way further to the left and stumbled upon a snow biome. Within the snow biome, I managed to find a cave that had some life crystals. So I picked up as many as I could and while I was making my way down I ended up getting killed by a dart trap since we went to the left side of the world and had absolutely no luck This time I decided let's go to the right side as maybe we could find some surface chests on the right side of the world And that is actually exactly what happened as I was walking over to the right I saw a tiny cave which I decided to explore within this cave I ended up finding a chest and you will not believe what this chest contained the first thing that came to my attention was the counter scarf Which is a revengeance mode eye of Cthulhu drop, but I was completely oblivious to the fact fact that we ended up getting one of the best weapons in the entire mod. We ended up getting the Mage Hammer of Might from the second chest we ever opened. This playthrough is going to be a complete breeze. While going further to the right, I ended up stumbling upon a living tree, went down to the bottom of it, and found another chest. This chest didn't really have any useful items. We ended up getting this really good grappling hook and this bow that fired rainbow arrows. It didn't really do a lot of damage, but the fire rate of that bow was absolutely insane, so I decided to pick it up and move on. While making our way over to the jungle, I ended up finding another surface chest. This gave us some accessories like the shoe spikes and a ton of temple teleportation potions. After this, I made my way down to the jungle because in previous playthroughs, that's where I've actually had the most luck in finding chests. We found a ton of chests within the jungle, but to be honest, we didn't really get anything too crazy that's even worth mentioning. We got some pretty cool swords, we got some grappling hooks, some accessories on the side, but nothing that really shifts the ties of the game. I also ended up farming a ton of life crystals within the jungle, which got us up to 260 health by the time we left. Once once I came back home, I decided to build some houses for NPCs as we needed the nurse to move in in order to cheese some of the harder bosses. I ended up building an organized chest area just so I can actually put some of the items that I'll need for later into them and soon after challenge the King Slime. This boss was an absolute joke, we took him out in mere seconds, but after this I decided to dig straight down in order to make a elevator. While digging down, I actually found a chest which had a decent set of wings, so I picked it up and continued digging. I ended up stumbling upon a mushroom biome which gave us another life crystal and an extra chest to I continued making my way down and in this process I ended up finding a ton of chests that really didn't have anything too special But we did end up getting some pretty cool vanity so I could customize my character make him a little bit more personal So the journey is a little bit more fun while searching through our chest I actually ended up getting the elemental Excalibur Which I would say is on par with the mage hammer of might in terms of damage So we have two of some of the best weapons in the entire mod, which is absolutely insane We haven't even fought the eye of Cthulhu yet and look at the type of weapons we have This is gonna be an absolute blast after this I decided to make my way into the corruption biome to fight the Eater of Worlds. We spammed him with the elemental Excalibur and took him out extremely quickly. I searched some of the Sky Islands because I know that they always have chests, but I couldn't find anything too good inside of them. So I proceeded to make my way over to Skeletron's dungeon and wait for it to turn into nighttime so we could fight Skeletron. As soon as it turned nighttime, I summoned him in and actually wanted to give him a chance. I used some weaker weapons just to make the boss fight a little bit longer, but even with the weakest weapons, we still took him out way too quickly. I made my way over to the dungeon in order to loot some chests because the dungeon is an area with the most chests in the entire game. Upon opening a chest, I found a very strange item called the Necroplasmic Beacon. I had no idea what this did, so I picked it up and used it, only to realize that this summons a post Moon Lord boss. Check out how this went. I lasted a solid 3 seconds and died right away. When I made my way back home, I decided to organize some of my chests and clean up my inventory because we had too much loot on us. I continued digging the elevator more because I wanted to fight the Wall of Flesh as fast as I could. I chucked the Guide Voodoo doll into the lava and once again decided to give the Wall of Flesh a chance. I knew that we could destroy it with the weapons we had, but I wanted to take it slightly slower. Even whilst using weaker weapons, we still ended up shredding through the Wall of Flesh and now we were into hard mode. As soon as we went into hard mode, a goblin invasion started, but with our overpowered weapons, we cleared it in just a couple minutes and I moved on to building more houses for the newer NPCs to spawn in. I made my way over to the corruption in order to break some demon altars because we're going to need to make a mithril anvil for crafting boss summons. While exploring the underground, I actually found a chest that contained over 
400 expert mode Moonlord bags. I used up as many of those bags as I could to get the best weapons, and I ended up stumbling upon something that I was completely not ready for. I ended up getting a weapon that was called Infinity. I had no idea what this did, if only I knew. Check this out. I shot it and it would not stop. These bullets bounced all around my world. Surprisingly, my game didn't lag whatsoever. But this gun did not stop shooting until my ammo ran out. I went back to exploring caves, found some more life crystals, maxed out my health, and while in search for Mithril, I ended up stumbling upon Plantera's Bulb, which is completely weird and out of the ordinary, because usually the Bulb only spawns after you defeat all three mechanical bosses. So to find out that one of her Bulbs had spawned before I even killed a single mechanical boss, I was somewhat shocked. I wanted to get rid of her as fast as I could, and hey, if we can skip the mechanical bosses, why not do that? I took her out extremely quickly using the Terrarian and these buffed up vampire knives that I actually ended up finding in the chest, but as soon as Plantera was defeated, I made my way over to the jungle temple in order to fight golem now one thing that i realized is we were going to have to actually farm out the lizard power cell because we could not find it in the chest usually these power cells are in every single temple chest but since all of our loot was randomized i couldn't find a single one i stood there grinding for the longest time but decided to give up and just move on to something else after exploring the jungle for a bit i thought it might be the time to come back and try to farm it out again but we were in absolutely no luck i made my way back to spawn and explored more caves in search of mithril after that i I made my way back to the jungle temple and stood there with my weapons out spamming them all over the area in hopes that we could get the power cell. I spent a solid hour standing there before I actually made my way down to the ground and realized that there were three power cells on the ground. I summoned in and defeated Golem and before I could make it home safely I ended up stepping on a trap which killed me but it was all good because I wanted to make my way back home anyways. I went over to Skeletron's dungeon and fought the lunatic cultist. He got me pretty low and he was pretty challenging but I decided to push through him and I killed him fairly quickly. As soon as we killed him, I was in the area of the Vortex Pillar. I spam my boot like vampire knives for as long as I could until the shield around the Vortex Pillar disappeared, meaning that we could actually damage it. I took out the Vortex Pillar and moved on to the Stardust. This is probably the easiest pillar. We took almost no damage whatsoever, and then we moved on to the Solar Pillar. This pillar got me actually pretty low on health. Surprisingly, we didn't die and left the Nebula Pillar for last. We took it out fairly quickly as well, and I rushed my way back home because I didn't have any recall potions or a magic mirror and I wanted to be as close to spawn as I could when fighting Moon Lord. I buffed up, fought Moon Lord, it was super quick, the boss fight was extremely fast, but I got pretty low on health, I thought I was gonna die, but we ended up pushing through it and we killed Moon Lord. For some reason, another goblin army invaded, so we took care of that as fast as we could. I don't know why another one spawned, we were pretty unlucky, but who cares, we get extra money, right? After I killed Moon Lord, we needed to summon in the profane guardians, meaning that we had to farm out unholy essence, which can only be found in high quantities within the underworld. As soon as I had enough, I made my way back to spawn, crafted the summon for the profane guardians, went to the overworld hallowed biome, and summoned them in. This boss fight was a piece of cake, we took no damage whatsoever, and we shredded through this boss's health. After fighting the profane guardians, I decided to fight the next boss on the list, which was the dragon folly. I crafted the summon for it, went over to the jungle, summoned it in, and we absolutely shredded through this boss's health. It took us no time to kill it, but I've actually never fought this boss before, and it was really interesting to see how everything worked, how its attacks played out, because I was oblivious on what was going to happen. After that, I made my way down to the underworld, built a platform, and summoned in Providence. This was pretty horrific. I got destroyed. I wasn't ready for this whatsoever. I had to re-strategize. During this time, I went to go make a Mithril Anvil, finally, because I want to craft an item called the Daylight, which can instantly turn nighttime into daytime. After I crafted that item, I turned it to daytime and decided to summon in Providence within the overworld hallowed biome, as to have more space. This time, we ended up getting Providence extremely low but we still managed to somehow die. After this, I summoned the Profane Guardians once again because we needed to kill the Profane Guardians to get the spawn for Providence. Fought these three rock boys and moved on to Providence. This time, I learned some of her attacks and I ended up dodging a lot of them, meaning that we could deal some serious damage and take this boss out. We ended up defeating Providence and moved on to fighting the three bosses before summoning in the Devourer of Gods. We had to fight Stormweaver, the Ceaseless Void, and Cygnus. But to summon these bosses in, we needed over 150 unholy essence meaning we were back to farming for loot i made my way down to the underworld and farmed out 150 unholy essence once i made my way back to spawn i ended up crafting the summons for all three of these bosses the first one we fought was Stormweaver. i made my way to space summoned him in killed his first form and somehow on the second form i managed to die but that's all right because the summon was infinite and we could do it all over again on our second attempt i beat him extremely quickly and next move on to cygnus i made my way down to the underworld 
summoned him in, but I was not ready for him whatsoever, and I ended up dying. After making my way back, I spawned him in again, but this time, after knowing some of his attacks, I took him out fairly quickly. The last boss we had left, and arguably the hardest, was the Ceaseless Void. I thought it'd be pretty easy, so I didn't make an arena or anything, I just summoned him in, and I died a gruesome death. Somehow the Eye of Cthulhu actually managed to spawn in after I died, so I killed that and teleported back to the dungeon. With this boss, we died over and over and over again. I don't know why it was so hard for me to defeat this boss, but after a solid 30 minutes of trying on and off, I decided to just give up and fight Poltergast. We took out Poltergast fairly quickly, and by this point, I thought I was ready to fight the Ceaseless Void. We fought him one last time and actually ended up being successful with that, and I was so relieved that we could finally kill this boss. I made my way back to spawn and realized that I could not summon in the devourer of gods because I deleted all of the loot that these bosses had dropped meaning that I had to refight all of the bosses once more. Well, with no other choice, I refought all of the bosses, got all of the loot, and crafted the Cosmic Worm. And now, here comes the big moment. We're gonna fight the Devourer of Gods, and oh boy, was this boss fight challenging. As soon as I summoned him in, I ended up dying almost right away. We died non-stop, over and over and over again, but at some certain time, I ended up taking out his first form, meaning that we won't have to fight his minions before we can challenge his second form, which makes the boss fight infinitely easier. We died over and over again. We died so many times that I absolutely lost count. I actually ended up rage quitting but joined back a few hours later and this time I actually managed to defeat the Devourer of Gods. Once this boss was defeated, we had to move on to the Frost Moon and the Pumpkin Moon in search of endothermic energy and nightmare fuel. I ended up planting some seeds so pumpkins could grow because we need to summon in the Pumpkin Moon and after that I waited for it to turn to nighttime and summoned in the Frost Moon. This was horrific, we died many many a times but we got enough endothermic energy that we probably won't need to fight this event ever again. I turned it to daytime, picked up the pumpkins that have already grown, and summoned in the pumpkin moon. This was also pretty horrific, we died many many times, but that's alright because once it was over, we had enough endothermic energy and nightmare fuel to craft Draydon's Forge. I crafted the forge and very soon fought the Ravager in hopes of getting his loot so we could craft life alloy and craft the summon for yarn. We actually couldn't get enough materials with one boss fight, so we ended up fighting the boss a couple of times, and alongside that, I decided to fight the devourer of gods one more time before crafting yarn summon and heading over to the jungle. See the thing is, I've actually never fought yarn by myself before, meaning that I had no idea how his attacks went and I got absolutely destroyed on just the first phase of the boss fight. Now before we continue, let me tell you, the yarn boss fight was the most toxic, heartbreaking, atrocious thing I've ever had to do. The entire fight took me probably a solid 5 hours and I'm not even over exaggerating. Just to finish off his first phase, it took me so long. but some Somehow we managed to push through it and after dying over and over and over again, I ended up taking out his first form and now we were ready to move on to Yarn Stage 2. Now while trying to defeat the second stage, I actually decided to record a live commentary. So here is your very own personalized Boyo Rage compilation trying to defeat Yarn. Some buff potions. I'm so tired of this boss. Come on! Oh lord, that's a bad attack. No, I'm dead. I'm dead! Please, this is just the first phase, bro. As long as I can get my what's it called? Adrenaline going. Yeah, so much for that. Fuck. As long as as long as I as long as I can get my 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 my, my periods going. Fuck. Dude, dude, dude. No! I'm gonna get absolutely obliterated here. No, no, no. Oh no! Oh, we're doing fine. We're doing normal. We're doing decent. Don't die now. No, no, no! 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 Come on, we're so close! Dude, I swear to God. No, no, no. Come on, come on, come on. No! Why'd I go to space? Don't die now. Don't die now! No! I've been stuck on yarn for the past like four hours! I don't even care, bro. Just kill me. I give up. I literally give up. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. Okay, second stage, easy money. No! We actually got pretty close to defeating Yarn a couple of times. I decided that I was gonna need help if I wanted to make any progress by this point because I was stagnant for the longest time and I got my friend to join the game. I ended up giving him some pretty good loot, I farmed out some life crystals for him and gave him decent armor so we could go and fight Yarn together. We died so many times that I can't even explain but after taking a long break from the game, we came back and took this boss fight as serious as we could. We used the power of adrenaline and teamwork to take out Yarn. I don't think I've ever felt better in my life 
even after killing Yarn. But indeed, we ended up taking him out, and we can now move on to the main boss herself, Supreme Calamitas. Now, if I get any more comments saying, Boyo, it's not Calamitas, it's Calamitas. Or even better, as average Adrian would say, Supreme Calamitas. If I hear any of those, if I get any of those comments, I'm gonna call your mom. But anyways, we got right into the Supreme Calamitas boss fight, and we died right away. We fought this boss over and over again. We actually made it pretty close to killing him, but we were in no luck whatsoever. We played for hours on end trying to defeat this boss, and we made no progress. Literally zero. Every single time we'd get close to the end, we would die over and over again. There was no hope for us. After a solid two hours of playing, of trying to beat him non-stop, my friend just decided to quit the game because he did not want to play anymore, and that's how you know that it's bad. This guy has beaten Supreme Calamitas in death mode, so if he finds this too hard, are you kidding me? I can barely beat Moon Lord alone on normal mode. How do I have a chance of beating Supreme Calamitas in Revengeance, okay? I was pretty screwed, and since I had no one else to join and help me out, I decided to resort to the help of God mode. Yeah, I know, okay, but I just, guys, I'm sorry. This was the only way I could finish this playthrough and actually beat this boss. So I turned on God mode, gave myself a pretty overpowered item, and fought the boss. I tried to make the boss fight seem as legit as possible. I tried to still dodge as much as I could, but I guess I still didn't really beat him legit. So I don't know if it counts or not. You guys can judge me all you want. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do, you know? If you enjoy this type of content, consider checking out another one on screen. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Be sure to join our Discord in the description down below. You can also follow my Instagram. Guys, I made a new Instagram. It's also in the description. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in another video. Peace out.